his freedom to come home and continue as an American citizen enjoying the blessings of this great country called the United States was his privilege because of that. Took the glory for him. That's the cost of our freedom. Hundreds upon thousands of men and women who have taken the bullet in order that you and I might enjoy the freedom that we enjoy. And you and I in Christ have forgiveness of sins and the guarantee of a home in heaven. Why? If I can say it this way, because Jesus on the cross took the bullet for you. Amen. Jesus took the bullet for me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the cost of our freedom. The vision of our freedom, the cost of our freedom. Would you also consider with me this morning the celebration of our freedom? That's what we're trying to do today. Not only remember, but to celebrate the freedom we have. The United States of America today is 234 years old. Actually, if you study history, that's a long time for a nation to remain free. Rome only made it 200 years. But when you look at our history, in the context of world history, America is just a child among the nations. Egypt, China, Japan, Rome, and Greece all make America's history seem so short. Consider what a brief time we have really been here as a nation. Listen to this. When Thomas Jefferson died, Abraham Lincoln was a young man of 17. When Lincoln was assassinated, Woodrow Wilson was a boy of eight. By the time Woodrow, this is going to blow your mind, by the time Woodrow Wilson died, Ronald Reagan was a boy of 12. There you have it. The lives of four men, four presidents of this country, can take you and me all the way back to the beginning of our country 234 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Amen. We're so young, and yet we stand tall among the nations that I've mentioned and so many others because of the principles on which we were established. We hold these truths to be self evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights. And that among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Years ago, when I was pastoring in El Paso, Texas, I had a funeral one day, and, and it was a military burial at Fort Bliss. And as I was driving riding along in the funeral hearse for a funeral coach with the funeral director, we began to talk about the military and the this was right in the time of every storm and, and everything. And of course, we had full alert there at the base and, and all kinds of security to clear and everything. And, and uh, we began to talk about the matter of security in our country and so forth. And, and then he mentioned, well, he said a few years ago, he said, I had a very interesting experience. And I said, what was that? And he said, well, he said, I drove the funeral coach for the funeral of the general of the Army, Omar Bradley. Later on, pointed out to me where he was buried. He said the thing that he remembered was when they were holding his body in state at the funeral home, they had 24-hour military security because that sort of a body is subject to ransom if it can be stolen. Think about that. So I would stand the reason this morning that I would want to quote General of the Army, Omar Bradley. Omar Bradley was the first chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and commander of the 12th Army Group 
who led and fought in our victory over Germany. A colleague, close colleague of General and then eventual President of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower. I quote General Bradley. This is years ago. America today is running on the momentum of a godly ancestor. And when that momentum runs down, the general said, God help America. It's almost as we consider what's going on in our country in 2010 that the general spoke his prophet. Let me quote that again. America today is running on the momentum of a godly ancestry. And when that momentum runs down, God help it. Let us be reminded of the words of Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. I read again from the paraphrase of the message. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. In other words, stand for that freedom that we have in Christ. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. Don't you think maybe our founding fathers read that verse of Scripture? We want to continue to be free as a nation. We want to continue to be able to come here anytime we choose to worship God and not have anybody tell us that we can't. And yet we live in a country where just the other day, Christian people causing no ruckus or demonstration whatsoever were arrested in Detroit, Michigan for passing out gospel tracts. At a Muslim function. I can promise you if the situation were reversed, the Muslims passing out material would not have been arrested. Just so you won't question where I stand on things, uh, uh, I was watching Wayne Beck the other night, and he had several key pastors from across America on his program. They represent men who have signed the Manhattan Declaration. They are men who are committed to the Word of God from all different denominational backgrounds, independent Christian backgrounds. John Hagee was there, a man from Princeton Theological Seminary was there. Brilliant, brilliant man. A man I know from Georgia, Richard Lee was on there, and some other guys, I can't remember what their names were, but godly men. But they have all signed. I'm going to be looking at it online because I think I'm going to be able to sign as well. It's the Manhattan Declaration whereby they are signing this declaration stating that number one, they believe in the sanctity of life. Amen. That number two, they believe in the sanctity of marriage. One man, one woman. Amen. One husband, one wife. And that number three, they believe in the historic principles, basic constitution, Bill of Rights, everything that we, we stand for as a country that made this country great. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been to Washington, D.C., I challenge you to go and walk through the Library of Congress. There are scriptures all over the place, engraved in stone. There is no doubt what our forefathers did. Amen. And what they believed in, what their vision was. 